in the remotest part of India, get it to Hong Kong. I had the good fortune of sitting next to the Norwegian Consul General of Guangzhou at a dinner party and I told him what we'd done and what my, my dilemma was. And he said to me very calmly, he said, Mr. Hardy, don't worry, I think I may have a solution to this. The world's largest ship was owned by Hong Kong and then by Norwegian ship owners. So I think it's very appropriate that Norway brings this anchor back to its final port of call in, in Hong Kong. Well, it's ending up in the front of the Hong Kong Maritime Museum in its new location in Central. And I hope it will be a landmark in Hong Kong to remind uh, people from Hong Kong about the significance of the maritime industry for this place and certainly for my country, Norway. The shipping industry is and always has been tremendously powerful. OK, these days we don't have the 70, 80,000 seamen that there used to be. Back in 1950, maybe one in four people who was employed in Hong Kong was employed in the shipping industry one way or another. We have some kind of ballpark estimates that think it's probably still 10 to 15 percent of Hong Kong's economy. The shipping industry made Hong Kong, the shipping industry is still at the heart of Hong Kong, and then, just culturally speaking, no harbour, no Hong Kong. Basically an unstable load. You don't know what it's going to do once you've moved it up into the air a bit. It may slip slightly in the slings, a bit of chain may fall off, and so you're juggling a whole bunch of suck it and see things, uh, which you don't